What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Coach Zach podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rance, certified life coach, certified nutritionist, mental health advocate. I like to bring guests on here that are leaders in their chosen field, whether it's a doctor or nutritionist or maybe just another life coach or spirituality coach. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I can share it with you guys. I hope you enjoy. Amazing, dude. Well, thank so you fun. so much. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hop on the podcast today, dude. Yeah, thank you, man. It was, I think we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a great time. We're going to rock on. We're going to talk a lot about light, life coaching, self-mastery. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about gaining more power over our addictions and things like that, right? Which I know is something that you're, you specialize in. So I guess really briefly, tell us about where you're at, what you do, and how you support your clients. Yeah, so, well, it's funny. I started doing this a long time ago, over 15 years ago, and it was because I got sober. My life had changed. I was My life was really falling apart. The man you see here now or are listening to now is not the man that I once was. And I grew up in the Northeast, and then I went out and became a ski guy and lived in the mountains, and I was a crazy guy. And my life started to change, and so I wanted to help other people's lives change too for those that didn't know how to figure out how to do it on their own which i didn't and uh, it was a p- long painful process and you know the first couple of years were really long and painful and my goal was really to like i was like hey you know if i could shorten the learning curve on somebody uh who's really just struggling in life that's really what i wanted to do and that's why i got into what i do and um it started out as just addiction recovery uh, because that's my background and I love doing that and I did a lot of motivational speaking and I love doing that stuff except the world closed down which is why I do my podcast now and I just enjoy it so much you know part of growing up and becoming sober becoming a, um, a more useful member of society is giving back and living a life of service which is really what we should do as humans not just as like a sober person but I, so what I was able to do is set my life up in a life of service. And so it's morphed into, I do a lot of marriage and addiction uh, addiction recovery, but also marriage and love and relationship coaching. I have high performers, guys that make a million dollars a month, and then I have kids that I work with too. And it's really just about giving direction. It's not so much like I'm the, like a a smart know-it-all guru coach therapist kind of guy it's just that we all need somebody in our lives to who's not emotionally attached to our crap to give us some direction and give us a different point of view on what we're going through and so when somebody says hey you know I'm going through this what should I do and I'm like well I don't know I can't tell you what to do my job as a coach isn't to tell you what to do it's to lead you to the right answer and so I can look at your stuff because I'm not emotionally attached to your stuff. And I can say, why don't we try it from this angle? And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, yeah, interesting. I didn't think of that. And that's what I do. And, I, you know, I, I live a life of service that makes me happy and fills me up. I kick the covers off every morning and go, this is great. Like, who do I get to help today? Amazing, dude. I yeah. love that. Yeah, and well, when we first got on the call, you were like, oh, yeah, I want to get down to Mexico and do some meditation and stuff. So um, that's a huge part of my practice is getting people to be more mindful. In fact, I'm working on a whole video series right now on, on mindfulness and meditation and, you know, taking all of our actions with more intention, uh, very purposeful. It gets us to where we want to go faster, making less mistakes and, uh, again, helping people along the way. Yeah. Actually, that's a great segue into my my first question. How can someone practice mindfulness and how is that going to add value to their life? Well, you said an important word there and that's practice. It it requires practice. You know, so our our minds, and I don't know who's listening, what uh, your background is or whoever's listening's background but on average the human brain we as people have about 60 to 80,000 thoughts every single day so if those were all useful productive thoughts how awesome would that be but they I would say that at least 95% of those thoughts are either useless or even harmful thoughts right so if we can calm our brains down and just 
you know, eliminate 10 or 20,000 useless thoughts every day and allow room for the right answers or for more useful responses or answers to come into our brains, we have a better chance of being more successful. Right. And, you know, being mindful, um, it, well, let me talk first about meditation. There's a misconception and people think I, I need to control my mind and my thinking. And the idea of meditation, it's not to control your mind, it's to not let your mind control you. So when our brains are going at one thought per second and they're like, you're not good enough, you don't deserve that, or you're fat, or you don't have enough money, or what do people think about me, or whatever. If I start going down those paths and letting those thoughts dictate how my day's going, that's the way my day goes. But if I can just entertain those thoughts and become mindful, in meditation and just allow those thoughts to kind of pass through, then I have a better chance of being happier, more productive and getting that inner peace and success that we're all after. Amazing. You know, that's something that's something I've been really intentional about is my mindfulness. I meditate for 15 to 20 minutes in the morning. I drop into a five to 10 minute meditation in the afternoon, but I try to create cues and triggers around my daily habits that I'm going to do anyway and incorporate some mindfulness. So when I get in my car, I try to take a deep breath, right? When I take a shower, I try to just really feel the water dripping down my body every time I wash my hands. Um, and then sometimes I'll even set timers on my Apple Watch to go off every 15 minutes. And I have a timer that goes off every 15 minutes and I check in with myself. Hey, you know, were you more disciplined? this 15 minutes than last 15 minutes. You know, did you accomplish a lot of things over the last 15 minutes? And mindfulness, really the foundation, and correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, is awareness, right? Being aware that, hey, you're either getting closer to being more mindful or you're getting further away from being more mindful. And mindfulness, as a practice, you cannot succeed or you cannot fail. Mindfulness is easy to do. You just got to remember to do it. It's true. And, you know, it awareness and you're absolutely right awareness comes from being mindful it comes from practicing like we said earlier it's like uh, it'd be cool if i could just like get everything right if i could be like just walking down the street oh i'm not making enough money right now oh but uh, i'll just do this and then that'll change or my life my health isn't so good i'll just do that but usually we, we have to suffer a little bit mm -hmm. and before we figure stuff out or we can put ourselves into like a mindfulness state calm our minds down, get into a mindfulness state, increase our awareness, right? And by what, so what do we mean by increase our awareness? It's just like I said, it's like understanding what's going on around me, not reacting to situations or overreacting, but responding intelligently instead. And all of those types of things come from being mindful and meditating on a regular basis because otherwise my mind takes off. And that's my, the name of my podcast is the Funky Brain Podcast. Right? Because our brains are funky. And this goes back to Buddhism. Buddha said this 2,500 years ago. He called our minds the monkey mind. The monkey mind. Right. The monkey mind, right? So just because, let's say this. We're running through, we're, we live in New York, we live in LA, we're like, we got stuff to do, I got a business, I got two businesses and a family and cars and I'm in sitting in traffic, I'm going crazy. So my mind is going crazy too, right? But if I sit down and meditate, my body stopped, but my mind's still going, right? So it, the mind doesn't stop. It's never going to stop. And that's a misconception people have about meditating too, is that, oh, I can't calm my mind. Like when we see the statues of Buddha or we see the Dalai Lama or Thich Nhat Hanh or some Zen master meditating, we think that their minds have stopped. And that's not true at all. They just let the thoughts flow through them. They don't, they're not controlled by their thinking. Mm -hmm. Their lives are not controlled by the erratic thoughts that go through them. They don't judge them. They don't use them to dictate their, who they are. They just, you know, carry on. Right. Our monkey mind. And that goes hand in hand with the 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Whether you're singing a song in your head or thinking about what happened yesterday or thinking about how you need more money for this, our monkey mind is either craving something, has aversion to something, is judging something, or suffering from something, whether we don't have enough or, you know, and, and that plays hand in hand with how a lot of us overeat and how a lot of us think that we have anxiety issues when we all have anxiety. I have anxiety, you have anxiety, Buddha had anxiety. We yeah. just deal with it, process it a different way. 
we're able to disidentify from our thoughts because Dennis is Dennis, Dennis's thoughts are Dennis's thoughts. Dennis is not his thoughts. Dennis is the awareness of Dennis's thoughts and really separating your thoughts with who you are. And that gap in mind is where you really become super mindful, feeling the energy inside your body instead of using your energy for what more can you get or what more can you dislike, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is great. I mean, you've done a lot of work, and it's, you sound great. Um, Thank you. But, you know, there's a um, um, John Kabat Zahn. Do, do you know him? No. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a mindfulness master guy. You know, just a white dude from New York or from the Northeast somewhere. I forget, maybe Boston. But he he's been doing this for, since the '60s, and um, but he's like, and, and this comes from ancient stuff too. He's just a delivery person, but you know. It, we, nothing we're talking about is new. It's just a, your delivery method, right? right? But, you know, when you drop into a meditative state or you're trying to be in a meditative state, we're trying to calm our minds down and our minds are going to tell us, I need to go somewhere. I need to do something. And what he said, he's like, there's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to obtain. There's nobody to impress. There's no weight to lose. There's mm -hmm. no money to make. We're just here right now and we need to be present. All of our fears and insecurities and heartaches and anxiety come because we're thinking about something that happened in the past or something that may or may not happen tomorrow or in 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. And we might die later, you know, not to be morbid, but we might not be here. So we need to really just focus on the present. And when we do, we get that inner peace inside of us, that mm -hmm. heaven that everybody strives for somewhere on the outside is already inside of us. Everything we need, all the answers, the, the success, all the, the earthly things that we want are already inside us. We just need to access it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it only comes from being really calm and silent. The more, the harder I try to reach for it and grab for it, the farther away it goes. Wow. No, you're absolutely right. The, the harder you try to reach for it, the further away it goes because God is right inside you. God is the beating of our heart. God is the blood that's running through our veins. He's the stars in the sky. He's the wind blowing at your back. He's the ocean, the mountains, and the valleys, right? That's God. Science can only explain so much. You know, it's like, you know, why are people born? Well, you know, a semen infiltrates an egg and an ovary and a kid is born. But like, how? Well, you know, it develops. Well, how? How does a cell turn into a human being? Mm. How does our heart beat? Like, I get it, blood flow and neurons and our brain is sending signals down our spine. Like, sure, I, I get it that you can explain the process, but but how? Like, there's something else that we're missing, right? Yes. Yeah, and and yeah, and I said on the last on one of my other podcasts with Christy Whitman, we were doing a lot of like quantum healing and a lot of law of attraction mm -hmm. type stuff. And um, one of the things that, that we talk about is how Dr. Joe Dispenza in his book breaks down our body from you know our skin, our organs become mm -hmm. tissue, become molecules, become atoms, become subatomic particles. And you know those subatomic particles are really just energy. They're yeah. just electrons and fucking neutrons and protons. So we're really just energy. And yeah. being able to hone in on your energy, control your energy with your consciousness, right? By controlling your thoughts because thoughts are things. Mm. And it, it's just, it, I love, but what I'm really passionate about is, is tying all this together with spirituality. You know, the Stephen Hawking's, the Albert Einstein's, you know, the Sir Isaac Newton's, right? Like you can tell me the world is round and you can tell me that E equals MC squared and that gravity exists, right? But there's there's a lot more going on here and we don't even know a fraction of what's really going on. Nothing. Yeah, so let me ask you a question. So how, how, are, how are you exploring more? What rabbit hole are you climbing down that you're trying to figure out about this whole thing called life? Wow, that's a huge question. I mean, uh, the, <laughs> there's so many different directions. Like, how do I feel in the moment? It's really just a lot of mindfulness. I mean, I moved to Mexico because um, I just moved here three weeks ago. And I, I've been living in uh, mountains. I was an, I'm an old ski 
racer guy. And so I used to live in mountains and I was a skier and I set my life up because I'm almost 50 years old. And I set my life up on uh, that idea that I was the skier, mountain man, fisher guy, like all the, the mountain biker, like all, all that stuff that I was. And that's who I was 30 years ago. It's not who I am today. But I've still been living. I haven't been that guy for 15 years. And my life is like, I was kind of, I remember a few years ago going like, I'm just kind of bored with life. You know, yeah. and you have to create that, um, that excitement in your life. Like, it no, it's nobody's responsibility to give that to you or to teach you anything. You have to be seeking and searching. And um, that's where the mindfulness and meditation come in and where the awarenesses grow. And so what happened was I've been coming to the beach for, you know, 15, 16 years and scuba diving and all that stuff. And um, I realized just a short time ago in this, you know, I haven't skied in seven years. I haven't done any of those mountainous things in years. Yeah, I live up there. I hate the snow. I hate shoveling snow. And I came down here in February for a month. And I started talking to people and seeing um, the, the way that they were living and uh, realizing like the costs and what I do and how I can work from here. And I worked the whole month I was here. And I went back home and I, I realized I was like, I'm not that person anymore. So now I have to explore who am I then? All right, I'm almost 50 years old. Who the hell am I? Right? And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm like reinventing myself. I'm refining myself. A lot of people think, you know, I mean, I'm a successful, happy, healthy man. And they look at me and be like, wow, you must have everything figured out. Well, none of us ever does. Right. When you think you know the rules, the rules change. Uh huh. And we have to constantly be growing our awareness, constantly be searching and seeking and reading and meditating and writing and talking to other yes. people. Stay teachable. Live with the beginner's mind. When you talk to somebody, Humility. listen to what they're saying and maybe you'll learn something. Dude, I love that answer. So one thing you said about, you know, when you think you know the rules or when you know the rules, the rules change. Yeah. Right? It's almost like uh, I, I read this metaphor a lot in nonfiction personal growth books about uh, the field goal. It's a moving field goal post. Yeah. Right? We're trying to get a million dollars in the stock account. We're trying to, you know, have a kid and get married quickly. We want to buy a house. We want to travel the world, right? But, but having a goalpost that is in one spot gives you a better chance of making three points and kicking the ball through the, through the two arms of the field goal post. So how do you keep your goalposts in one, in one position if things are constantly changing? Again, it's just living a mindful life and, and being prepared, right? Because, um... You know, what my truth is today might not be my truth tomorrow. And who am I? You know, I have a coach, too. You know, I coach lots of people and I have a lot of clients and some really well-known big name people. But I need a coach, too, because they're like, oh, well, Dennis must know everything if he's coaching this guy and this person. And, and but I don't, you know, and if I if I don't see my coach for a while, then I get off. And he told me. Because he knows I'm a beach boy and I'll, be, I'll live in the ocean, you know. And he said to me, Dennis, before you move down there, I want you to write a plan about how you're going to stay focused and intentional every day to get all the things done that you want to do. And I was like, you know, I'm a high performer. I was like, I don't need that. I don't need to do that, man. I got everything under control. And I got down here and I'm like, uh, I'm like I have, here's my to-do list. I have all this shit to do. Maybe I'll go for a swim, you know. So I have to stay intentional too and yeah. taking actions with intent instead yeah. of just winging it. Like one of the things I, I work with my clients on constantly, constantly is staying focused. Yeah. Everything we do is staying focused because we are so unfocused. And you said something earlier about like uh, overeating, right? Mm -hmm. That's just another distraction. Just like drinking or getting stoned or watching porn or Netflix for six hours a day or scrolling on our phones or whatever it is that we're doing instead of doing what we want to do to achieve our goals. Those are all just distractions. Some of them are addictions. Once you reach a certain point on some of them, they're like actual physical addictions and cravings. I'm an addiction coach, so I understand all that stuff. But for the most part, we're unfocused. 
We're unclear on what we're doing, and there's a great title to a book that you don't even have to read because it's in the title. If I don't know where I'm going, I'm going to end up someplace else. So every night before I go to bed, I want to know where I'm going tomorrow. What's on my calendar? What do I need to do to get to where my goals and dreams are? So when I wake up, I hit the ground running and I work on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, a, a lot of addiction and distractions come because I'm not planned, I'm not prepared to attack my goals if I even know what my goals are. You know, if I'm just winging it, a lot of people are playing video games and eating Chick-fil-A and just kind of winging it, you know, and that's those are the results you get. But if I'm focused and intentional, I have an accountability person. To, you know, I'm sure you have somebody that you are accountable to on a regular Absolutely. basis. I, I have two mentors that I yeah. speak to on a weekly basis. I was taught that my, my actual coach, but yeah. Yeah, I was taught have an expert in every area of your life. It's like if I need to go to court, I need a lawyer. If I get <laughs> sick, I need a doctor. Yeah. I hate doing my taxes, so I have to have an accountant to do that every year or I'll get in trouble. And I am i don't know how to crush my life on my own at a high level where I want to get all by myself all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So I need somebody to be accountable to to give me a kick in the ass. And all of those little things, let's say, because some people are like, I tried meditation, it doesn't work. I tried journaling, I tried reading, I don't like reading, I tried having a coach. Like, let's say all of these things are in a pie chart, and having a coach is maybe 30% of the pie, and then doing reading is like 20%, and meditating is 20%, and exercising and eating well, those are 10 and 20%, and then they all add up to 100%. So if I'm constantly working on filling in that pie chart, my life becomes complete. Mm. But if I'm just sitting there and eating McDonald's at breakfast and Burger King at lunch and ordering Uber Eats and whatever throughout the day and playing video games and scrolling and going, why is my life falling apart? Oh, it's a politician's fault, right? Right, yeah. exactly. Ooh. Yes, I'm responsible yeah. for my own well-being. Point the finger. Yeah. Yeah, I love that you brought that up. You know, every month I am someone who is extremely intentional about writing my goals down. I've been writing and making to-do lists my entire life you know, when I went to college, my parents didn't have money to help me out, so I immediately had to get a job, yada, yada, yada. No one cares. But the point is this. Um, every single month, I write down my goals. I write down my physical health goals, my mental health goals, my business goals, my savings goals, my reading goals, my habit goals, and uh, you know, being really specific and detailed about what I want my goals to be for this month in each piece of that pie, and then writing down that action steps and the micro tasks that I have to execute every single day to make sure that happens. So if I want to read five books this month and 35 hours on Audible, I have to only listen to Audible in the car. I'm not allowed to listen to music. And I have to read 25 pages a day, right? And then I keep this thing around with me at all times and I have literally them, this is June, this is last month, right? Yeah, uh-huh. So I, I like this small because I keep my, my fanny pack on me at all times and I keep it right here with the pen and I, I write in it incessantly and I have what I got to do every single day non-negotiable. Meditate, make my bed, read, audible, do my Spanish, fast till 1230, do, make sure my posture is good, write 500 words and then like engage on Instagram and things like that and then every single hour, I have every single hour what I'm doing that day, right? So it's That's beautiful stuff. Right? And, and look, this isn't, this isn't rocket science. This isn't rocket science, right? It's about consistency and focusing not so much on the goal, but the processes, right? Yeah. The micro tasks. And that's a lot of awareness, right? That's a lot of what you said is the awareness and, and living a complete life. So back to kind of the question of like, how do you keep your goalposts from not moving? I guess the answer is just to make sure that you're kind of taking care of each part of your life and making progress every single day towards your goals. Yeah, and then letting life unfold. You know that they say plans are plans really don't have any use because plans change all the time, but preparation is what has value. Right? So it's like if I if I'm taking care of myself, you know, we don't have any real problems. Everybody's like, I need more money, I need this, and I need that, I want this, all these things. But until you have health problems, then you have a problem. Right? So let's start taking care of our health and doing the right things, everything we just said. When why we're doing all these things, because people are like, I don't want to write 500 words. I don't want to listen to 35 hours of Audible. I don't want to do these things. But those things are what it, 
it takes to get you successful. That's preparation to get you there. Now what happens is if you do this for an extended period of time, you're going to look back and realize you are where you wanted to be. And people don't realize that part. And we, we, we look at Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Oprah and Richard Branson and we say, oh, they got lucky. They must, I don't know how they did it, but they're, they're different. You know, they're not like me. Well, the, they, we didn't see that. They worked 100 hours a week for the first 30 years. We don't see that part. Right. You know? and, then we, and then we say, oh, screw them. Or they don't deserve all that money or all that stuff. And, and then some people don't. But for the most part, the, the one... You know, the fraction of a 1%, they inherit like a, a millions of dollars. But most people aren't like that. They work mm -hmm. their asses off to Absolutely. get there. And so Absolutely. it takes a little bit. It takes work, effort, awareness, determination, and consistency to get where you want to be. That's it. Well said. And kind of back to what you said about, um, you know, I don't want to meditate. I don't want to write 500 words. Well, look, I didn't want to do these things either. But now I'm four years into daily meditation practice and it's not an obligation. And you know what? It shouldn't even be on my list because I do it every day regardless. I've just become so, it's so habitual to write these seven things down every day. But you know, I didn't want to read when I was 23 years old coming off a of big brother. I, I was a fucking pretentious douchebag. I don't want to read a book about personal growth. That's so cheesy. That's so cheesy. But now I love reading. I spend a hundred bucks a month on, on new books. I actually just got Jeff Bezos' new book written by Walter, uh, Walter Isaacson, the guy that wrote Da Vinci and Albert Einstein's biography and Steve Jobs' biography. And let me tell you something. That book is incredible. It's letters to himself in different years and in different uh, like areas of when Amazon was growing in. Um, but yeah, it, you know, just you got to do it in the beginning. Everything is messy in the beginning, you know, but then it gets easier and then it gets enjoyable, right? It does. And then, you know, so I was in the sauna at the gym a few weeks ago before I moved down here. And this kid, he was by, you know, he's like 20 or 22 years old or something. And he had... Um, uh, a, a little baby, another one coming. He goes, and he knew who I was and what I do and everything. And he's like, so Dennis, he goes, uh, if you have like a, one word of advice for a young guy just starting out, what would it be? And it's always the same thing. I say, ask questions. It's a, I was taught early on by one of my early mentors, and he, he said, it's okay not to know as long as you know you don't know. Right? Like, keep asking questions. If I walk around like I know everything, I'm never going to learn anything. Right, and that's where the rules have changed. If I find that I'm in this deep fear, this anxiety, this stress, or whatever's going on, a lot of times it's because the world changed and I didn't change along with it. So be willing to grow, don't ever lose your sense of wonder. Ask questions, ask for help, reach out to a coach, a mentor. It doesn't have to be like me or specifically a life coach, but. Walk up to somebody who you respect and admire and who's successful by whatever definition that is for you and say, hey, can we go grab some coffee? Or how, how did you get there? Can I ask a couple of questions? They'll be thrilled, you yeah. know, and then ask some questions and figure out how to get there and then start chipping away at it. And one day you can get there. That's it. And the most important thing, the foundation for that is knowing that you don't know everything. Because you don't know what you don't know. I didn't know that I had a love for meditation. I didn't know that, you know, the, an IRA and compound interest is something that exists. How <laughs> the fuck did I not know that? I was you were, that when you I was weren't taught that. Yeah, well, you weren't taught that, and it's okay. Right. right. Yeah, but it's okay. So now we'll go learn. You're like, how, if I invest money, how is that going to turn into anything? Ask somebody. Right. Or Google it. That's what I have my clients do all the time. They're like, Dennis, what should I do about this? So I have them do like a book report on their question. Yeah. Google it. Figure it out and send me an email later with a book report on how to how to be how to engage in better conversation. Uh-huh. Right? How do I start a Facebook page? Well, don't ask me all the time. Figure it out for yourself. If I tell you all the answers, you become dependent on me, just like you're dependent on alcohol or food or porn or whatever it is you're uh, dependent upon. Learn how to figure it out yourself, mm -hmm. and then you'll get there. And then along the way, ask me some questions. You know, on some of the some of the some things along the way. But learn how to find some answers yourself too. Yeah, absolutely.
being intentional, going out of your way, proactive, right? Not yeah. answering the questions, doing a Google search. There is no excuse for ignorance in 2021. That's right. Okay? I was not taught about compound interest. Obviously, in school, I was too busy learning about the Pythagorean theorem, which I don't even know what the fuck that is anymore. That's what I was learning. They weren't teaching me about compound interest, but I'm learning the Pythagorean theorem. Go figure. Public or education. world history. Yeah, go, go fucking figure. But yeah. 2021, there's no excuse. You type nope. in YouTube how to make more money, how to save money, how to become a millionaire, how to invest in real estate how to not be whatever, you know? So there, there's no there's no excuse anymore. Like you just gotta go on the two biggest search engines. They're called Google and fucking YouTube. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, and people are like, I don't like reading. Huh? So they're like, I don't wanna read any articles. You pull up a YouTube video. Yeah, you don't have to read anymore. You just watch a video. Anything in the world you wanna know how to do, there's a video on how to do it. And probably uh, uh, thousands of them and thousands of blog articles too. Easy. Easy. Dennis, will you please leave the audience with, uh, with a short monologue or some words of advice? Uh, well, similar to what I just said, you know, don't ever lose your sense of wonder. The world's a big place. We're here. Our time here on this planet, if time even exists, that's more quantum physics stuff. But if time even exists, our time, we're just a speck in an incomprehensibly huge universe trillions of years yes i mean this the universe that we live in has no end to it what's at the end of the universe a wall right and there's like who built the wall what's yeah, it stopped, Dennis, you didn't know the universe stops right here it started right here and now it ends right here yeah. yes and compared to what there is to know we know nothing so it's like nothing. stay curious enjoy your days don't stress over the small stuff and it's all small stuff and continue to grow and ask questions. And if you have a goal, work towards it. Do a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, and then you'll get there. A lot of the, the because I'm in the world of addiction, one of the things people are so addicted to is the instant gratification, right? So when I take a shot, I, you know, I drank because I was overwhelmed, full of fear and insecurity at a very young age. And I started drinking and that all went away. I didn't have to feel that way anymore. And then you fast forward 15 years of behaving that way. I never learned how to cope with that stuff. So I can remember being full of all those awful feelings and taking a shot and feeling it go down my throat and knowing that within the next one minute or so, I'm going to feel better. That's not how all of life works. Sometimes I pick a goal. And I start working towards it and things don't always go the way that I want them to, but I have to keep working towards it. And eventually with hard work, consistency, effort, help, I'm going to get there. Life isn't instant gratification all the time, but it's always great if you take the right path, do it with intention, stay mindful, expand your horizons, do things different. If, it, if things aren't going well, do something different. You know, so there's some simple stuff right there. But anyway, it's hard to just pick one word of wisdom there, but uh, it's like, that's my thing. Stay curious. Live with a beginner's mind. You know, and if somebody's bothering you, surround yourself with successful people. They say we become the sum of the five people we hang around with the most. If I hang around with five millionaires, I'm going to be the next millionaire. If I hang around with five stoners playing Xbox, I'm going to get really good at Xbox. Right. So, and what are your goals? Is being good at Xbox going to get you to your goals? I don't think so. But, you know, that's where you're going to end up. So, choose a path, find something healthy, take care of your body, your mind, and your spirit, and enjoy the ride. It's a nice ride. Love it. Enjoy the ride. Dennis, thank you so much again for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hop on the podcast today. This was a stellar episode. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, go ahead to DennisBerry.com. Get in touch with Dennis. Ask him any question you want. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Reach out to Dennis. Dennis, thank you so much again. And I'm um, looking forward to connecting again soon. Thanks, Zach, man. It was so nice to meet you. And uh, I hope we do connect soon. You could be on my show uh, soon. Would love to. Would yeah. love to. Anytime. I'm there. Right. I'll send out the invite soon. Sounds good. Talk to you soon, Dennis. All right, bye.